What's up YouTube? This is Print Practical. This is episode number four of the Ender 3 Pro build series. And today we're going to be installing a Creality branded BL Touch for auto bed leveling. So the Ender 3 Pro has been known to ship with both the 8-bit motherboard or the 32-bit motherboard, depending on when it was manufactured. So I have no idea what's in this. If this unit has an 8-bit motherboard, this kit comes with the USB burner in order to burn the firmware onto it. And we'll try and burn Marlin 1.1.9 with the BL Touch added for the Ender 3 Pro. If this unit came with a 32-bit motherboard, then we're in luck because it's really easy to flash. You just take the bin file and you put it on an SD card and turn the printer on and it automatically loads that firmware file. If that's the case, then I'll bring you through the steps on how to compile Marlin so that way we can tweak all our configuration values and set up bed leveling the way we want to. So first, let's pop the cover off the motherboard and see which version we're dealing with. So I noticed that most people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. If you could subscribe, that would be great. It helps out and I'll keep making content. All right, now that the printer's on its side, we got one, two, three screws here to take off the cover on the board. On the other side, we also have one screw right here. Now be careful because there's still a fan attached here. And we're just going to lower that down. Okay, so it looks like this unit has a Creality 4.2.2 board, which is a 32-bit motherboard. So this should be pretty easy to flash. Let's hook up the wires for the BL Touch. All right, so the wiring for this BL Touch doesn't work out naturally for this board. See this port that says GV in, G out? This is for a Creality 5-pin BL Touch wire. The wires that came with this BL Touch separate three wires and then the two wires that go into the Z end stop. So the pinout for this plug is red is voltage, blue is ground, yellow is signal. And you can see up here that ground and voltage are switched. How we're gonna fix this is we are going to pull these two wires out of this connector and swap them. And then we should be able to plug this three pin on the three pins in that five pin plug and then we will plug the two pin end stop port into the z-axis port Now we have ground, voltage, signal, just like on the Creality board. So you're gonna find that when you plug this connector in, it's gonna be pretty loose. So there's a few things you can do. Um, I just took a piece of electrical tape and wrapped it around to kind of thicken up the connector a little bit, but you could also just put a tap of hot glue on there. The reason why I went with the electrical tape solution is just because I'm going to be swapping out the main board on this printer soon. So I don't wanna glue the the BL Touch sensor in. Just a warning, Creality likes to hot glue all of their connectors in, so that was kind of a pain in the ass. But just be careful, pry out all the glue, and then pull the connector out. All right, so we got our three pin in the BL Touch port. We got our new Z-axis plug in there. Now you can take the old Z and you can thread it out the top. Looks like the connector plug doesn't easily go through there. So you can loosen these two screws up, which will loosen the whole casing. That way you can just pull it out to get a little more hole in there. All right, she's free. All right, so the cover's back on. I'm going to make this follow the loom that goes up to the extruder. So I'm just gonna hit a few zip ties while it's up on its side. All right, I flipped the printer back over and I'm just gonna continue my zip tie chain all the way up the extruder loom. So let's take the supplied bracket and let's mount the BL touch to that using the screws that they supplied.
Well, I have to use the Creality Supply to Allen wrench. That came with the printer because my electric screwdriver can't fit. So we're halfway there. We got the BL Touch installed on the printer. So now let's switch over to the computer. We'll pull Marlin 2.0, compile it, and put it on the printer. Okay, so the first thing you should do is install Visual Studio Code, and you should go to Extensions and search for Platform IO IDE. Next, Google Marlin Firmware on GitHub, and you'll find this URL. Uh, but this just brings you to the Marlin repository. We are going to build Marlin Bugfix 2.0.x and you can click code and download zip. Okay, now navigate to the Marlin firmware configurations repo. This has all the config files for a ton of different printers along with the default ones. So if you want to download these, make sure you switch to Bugfix 2.0.x and then you can do a download. So now it's time to open VS Code. Click open folder and navigate to the folder that you downloaded the Marlin source code to. So open up your file browser, go into the configurations and find the proper configuration for your printer, which if you're watching this, it's probably an Ender 3 of some kind. Ender 3 Pro, we have the 4.2.2 board and we have these files here. So I'm going to copy these files and I'm going to go into my Marlin build and we can see that the configuration files are in the Marlin folder and I'm going to paste and I'm going to replace the files that are currently in there. Okay, so now open your configuration.h file and let's do some modifications. I'm unsure why this gets put in, but I'm just going to comment it out. So scrolling down to the stepper drivers part of the configuration file, there's a warning that states that there's two different driver types that shift with this board, uh, one being the silent stepper type and one being the non-silent one. Um, I just know from experience that this Ender 3 Pro is a lot louder than all the printers I have with silent steppers, so I know that it's this one. If you don't know for sure, you can check the board uh, by popping off that cover again and looking at the motherboard. Scroll down to the Z Pro of options, and um, we wanna keep this defined in my current configuration because we are using the Z end stop switch port for our probe. And then we also want to define this, which is just stating that we are going to use the probe for homing the Z axis. Uncomment the define BL touch to configure that we have a BL touch. Now let's configure our nozzle to probe offset. This is just so the Marlin firmware knows where the probe is compared to the nozzle. So I might have to go take some measurements. So it is 41 in this direction, and it is four in this direction. So next we're gonna move on to the bed leveling section. I personally use bilinear leveling on all of my printers. So I'm going to uncomment bilinear leveling. I'm going to uncomment preheat before leveling, and I am going to change this to 60. You should always level your bed when it's warm. So I'm gonna change the grid that it uses to create the mesh from a three by three to a five by five. This is probably overkill, but I only level my bed every once in a while and I would like it to be more precise. I don't know if it helps, but that's just what I do. We can undefine this and it will give us a bed leveling option in the UI, even though I use Octoprint to do it. Uh, we'll put this in there for now. We're gonna enable safe Z homing. Um, this All this does is just moves to the middle of the printer to do its homing. That way it doesn't accidentally probe off the side of the bed and cause the nozzle to just smash into the bed. So now we're gonna modify the advanced configuration file. First, I'm gonna comment out this line because I'm not sure what it does. Okay, so scroll down to this baby stepping uh, section here in the advanced configuration and you want to define baby step Z probe offset. Okay, so now we're ready to build the firmware. Real quick, you wanna click down here and you wanna make sure that you are selecting the correct board for your printer. So after choosing your platform, it's going to load some tasks. So you have to wait for this to be done before we can build the firmware. Okay, so we're ready to build. This little check mark down here builds. Uh, 
Okay, it built it successfully. So I'm gonna throw my SD card in my computer. And I'm going to navigate to here. Here's the new firmware. I'm gonna just drag it right onto my USB drive. All right, the SD card is plugged in with the new firmware. Let's turn it on, see what happens. Awesome. Cool. So it looks like the printer's working. So we're about to click auto home. One of the biggest things you have to make sure you do is test the probe before you let it actually home. So I'm gonna hit auto home. Okay, the BL touch is working. Okay, now that our bed's pretty dialed in, I want to show you a really cool plugin in OctoPrint. So go into your plugin manager, get more, bed level visualizer, and install that. So OctoPrint's going to restart after you're done installing that. Connect to your printer, and then click this button, click bed visualizer. Now you need to take the Marlin bilinear bed leveling and paste that in here. And then save mesh, save. So now you can hit update mesh now. This is gonna run the bed leveler on your printer and then afterward it'll show you a nice graphical view of the mesh created by the printer. Okay, so the level finished and here's the mesh. Yellow is not very serious. I mean, that's only like 0.25 millimeters off. Um, another cool thing that this visualizer has is that it'll actually tell you how much you need to raise and lower each corner in order to make it totally flat. So you can turn that on to display here. So you can say at zero, zero, which is the front left screw, it's saying to turn 0.3 turns to the left. So the last thing you need to do is in your slicer, which Cura is my slicer of choice, I need to put in a new command, which is M420 space S1. And what this command does is it loads your ABL mesh. So this just enables your auto bed leveling uh, at the beginning of your print. It loads it from wherever it's stored. So here we go, came out perfect, it's on. It's got a perfect amount of squish to it. Looks really good. So this episode of the build series is over. We put on the BL Touch, we compiled Marlin, we set up Octoprint so that we could view the mesh and the bed is looking great. So uh, next video, I, I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I did buy an SKR 2.0 with some silent steppers, so that might be the next step. I'm unsure about it now, but subscribe and I'll keep putting out more content.